Bread, money, life, life. Bread, money, life. Bread, money, life, 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 life. Bread, money, life. Tell them we want more money, life. Tell them we want more bread, money. Tell them we want more money, life. Tell them we want more bread, money. What's good, listeners? This is Eric Patrick, the hip hop stock doc from Black Market Exchange. Uh, you can check us out at our website at www the bmex that's b-m-e-x dot com we're also on instagram at black underscore market underscore exchange and twitter bmex underscore um today we're going to get into our first episode for our podcast rent money and life i'm here with at carter park and we have a special guest today we have director and co-owner of lux film works Roger Carter, and he's gonna sit in and gonna kind of talk to us about how he invested in himself to fund the two films he has. So, Project Carter, introduce yourself, man. I am director Project Carter, uh, owner of Lux Film Works. You can reach me at uh, I am Project C on Twitter. I am Project C on Instagram. You can follow us luxfilmworks.com. All right, man. Yeah. Well, we're gonna go ahead and get this started. So. We were sitting back, relaxing, talking, man. Went through one podcast, didn't even record it. You know how we do. But we got it going. So uh, we were sitting back and talking, man. Right, we were right. talking about how like you use simple everyday things to invest in yourself. And when I when I say that and what I mean is like going out to lunch, maybe stopping at Starbucks, maybe getting some McDonald's for dinner or something mm-hmm. like that, how that money added up where you were able to invest in yourself and that's one of the things uh me and eric were kind of harping on like a lot of the people of color and the people that we're targeting are investing not in themselves not in themselves when i say not in themselves i mean like they'll go out and spend you know maybe 40 bucks a week on lunch when you could buy a stock that's trading at like thirty five dollars, mm-hmm. and you can invest in your future, man. So, go ahead and tell us. So you got so you got two films. You got Waves and Watercolors. Yeah, Watercolors is uh, my first film I'm working on, and then finished up a second one called Waves. But uh, I just wanted to come up with an idea to uh, save money, you know, because shooting a film it can become expensive and then you got to go out and get these crowd sources to get mm-hmm. this money coming in like so, kickstarter and stuff like that yeah and so instead of doing that i wanted to see how much i could individually invest back in myself and save so i just really took a took my everyday spending habits i would get up in the morning and I'd head to the store, get a Red Bull that was one ninety nine. Orange juice was one ninety nine. You know <laughs> yo, what I'm saying? Yo, I, don't, then, I don't drink Red Bull, but they go for one ninety nine. You drink Red Bull? Lee? No. <laughs> get that? Not for one ninety nine. You know the big ones is two thirty nine. So you know. <laughs> so I get that. Then I'd head over to fast food restaurant, get like a number four, number five, and that would be six or seven bucks. And I would do that morning. Noon and in the evening. Mm-hmm. So but in the film, I guess you always on the go, right? right. Yeah. Just you know, just doing stuff. Mm-hmm. And then I said, "Well, hey, I'm spending so much money on out to eat. How could I generate that income to come back in and I can invest it in myself?" So what I did was just started keeping the receipts of a regular typical day. On a typical day, I was spending anywhere from thirty five dollars to forty bucks. Whoa! So you were you were doing, and I'm gonna. I'm going to throw it to Eric on this. So you were doing like a self-analysis, right? Of right. how much you were spending. So right. 35 Because cause a lot of people, they ask you, Eric, right? Like, how much do I need to start investing? Yeah, that that's a big question. It's always number one because right. I think the stigma is that it takes a lot of money to invest. But, of course, the initial state is it takes money to make money. Right. But <laughs> you can always start with a small amount. Now, of course, you know, you get movies like Wolf of Wall Street where, you know, the penny stock was coming the big thing. So I can I can invest, you know, money and make money off the penny stocks. But you still got to factor in that if you if you put in ten dollars into a penny stock right. and the penny stock goes up 100 percent, well, you only made ten dollars. Yeah. So if you get a stock that is worth a hundred dollars and that stock goes up, you know, 10 percent, you made ten dollars. Like, the, you know, you got to look at it at a numbers game. So, and that might be a more viable company, but anyways, like you want to be able to take 
you want to view things in how um, like like take your daily spending habits right. and try to find stuff. Uh, you want to find companies that one you can relate to, but also it's affordable. So if you're spending, you know, thirty, forty dollars on you know this food where you could be packing your lunch, right. you could actually be investing in a company that yeah. might be about twenty or thirty bucks, and now it's not hurting your pockets as much because you just channeled that money to somewhere else. Yeah. You didn't you didn't create any new money at all. You just transferred it. And, and, right. And the thing about it was that when I started looking at how much I was spending over the month, like 400 bucks, I could put that and invest in myself. Because how much is it to do an independent film? Uh, you roughly, to do a good independent film, maybe $10,000. 10000 Yeah. I, I thought you could just shoot with an iPhone. No, no. <laughs> I mean, you know, you have some people luck up and can shoot <laughs> with it, but... To shoot a great audio lighting and all those Especially things. when you you know you love what you do. Right, That's right. So it, it'll take you $10,000. But I was seeing that if I invested in myself, I could get others to invest in me. Mm -hmm. So that was the first change of command to change how I was spinning out and have it coming back into myself. And real quick, that's actually like a basis of the stock market. Companies are building their brand. They're investing in themselves by producing quality products such as your films and getting other people mm -hmm. such as us to believe in that brand and give more money or invest into it. I mean, that's pretty much the basis of how the stock market is working. Right. And, and that's the basis of uh, black market exchange because you're trying to get people to, to think differently. Mm -hmm. We're trying to educate people to think outside of the box. So we have an independent film director here sitting right here with us today right. who said he changed up like everyday things that you, you, you go through every day. Like, you know, going to Starbucks, getting something. I keep going back to Starbucks because, man, they stock is great. <laughs> man. I'm but telling the key, you, the key you know, thing about that, you know, Starbucks <laughs> is actually about to start delivering. They have like, I think, oh. they, got, I think they got like a subscription service they're working on <laughs> where you pay like a flat fee a month and like you get like, so much coffee or something and like that. And they go deliver it with the whip on top. So <laughs> yeah, and so and I and at, when I was doing that, I was looking at not only what I was bringing back in, but I was looking at what I was buying. And so I was looking at all these brands that I was buying. Mm -hmm. So I was basically really investing a whole lot of money into brands that I wasn't even getting no money back. Yeah. So I wanted to cut that. And say I'm gonna start investing, investing in myself. You want know, that rate, that return, that, that rate, rate of return, <laughs> that rate of return. You just yeah. can't throw dollars up the strip club, fam. Yeah. So in doing that, I looked over the month. I was saving close to four hundred dollars, just alone in cutting back on the things that I was getting, and I put that money back in and invested in films. Mm -hmm. So I think if the first thing you got to pay yourself mm -hmm. and invest in yourself. To see change because nobody really you can't see any change unless you start with yourself and once people start seeing me invest in myself others wanted to invest in the company and give us this or give us money here and there because they saw i was investing in myself so let me ask you something and i'll have uh eric uh, expound on this um film is your main focus right do you do any other things like music videos or and stuff like that? Yeah, I I, I like to stay diversified. So we do uh, videos and we do documentaries. You know, we do shorts, full length video. You know, full length movie. So being diversified is the key. So in essence, you have a portfolio of work, right? Similar right. to a, a portfolio that an investor would have of different stocks and, right, and exactly. securities in there. Exactly. Exactly, because diversification is is so key to the survival of the business. Mm -hmm. Because if we was just in one lane doing one thing, movies, it'll take longer to get that rate of return in. So being diversified, saying okay, we also do documentaries, we do the videos, we do the shorts, and we do the full length. Anything on video, we're capable of doing. But the main big umbrella is. Film. film and then you factor in so in essence you, let's say your film is going to be a long-term investment mm 
Right. But in the short term, maybe you want you trying to keep the lights on, so maybe you're gonna do stuff like like videos, commercials, things like that. You know, shorter works to get back a quicker return. Exactly. Well, in essence, your portfolio is gonna be the same as your investment portfolio, where you can have an entity where you have a stock where you're like, I'm holding this for the long term. But then you have some stocks where it might be a cyclical thing. So say, for instance, since we're talking about, you know, food and maybe food that's not healthy for us. Right. Let's get into a company like Weight Watchers. Well, Weight Watchers is exactly on the stock market. And if you think about it, when most people want to start exercising, when is it mm. coming? It's going to be the first of the year. It's New mm-hmm. Year's resolution. Everybody wants to exercise. Yeah. So right. what's going on? Everybody's buying into Weight Watchers. Right. And then by the time when, you know, the summertime come around, they got that bikini body action. Right. They ain't going in Weight Watchers no more. They're not subscribing to that brand. Right. So now you have that stock where it's going to spike over this period of time and then it's going to cool back off. You getting jammed so, here, people. So you're going to yeah. have you're going to have a stock where you're going to hold something like a General Electric that's everywhere. That's a long-term investment. Right, but right. then you're going to have something like a Weight Watchers, which could be a short-term investment, just to get some quicker cash flow in and sell it. And then you can replace it with something else to keep diversifying your portfolio. Right. And the thing about it, until I met you, I was afraid of the big investment. Uh-huh. So I was looking at the small investments mm-hmm. because uh, the number seven at McDonald's and a drink is $10 right there. Mm-hmm. It's $10. So I could take that $10 when meeting the black market exchange and invest that and I could be in an investment. Because so, most people are afraid to, you know, the big, huge, the $1,000, yeah, yeah, the like, 500 Like you go so, to Chipotle. Chipotle is like $600 right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. Like, so most people are afraid, <laughs> but... Talking to you, it made me feel more comfortable about taking half of that and then investing half. Because mm-hmm. because as you, as I'm looking at the um, New York Stock Exchange right now, Weight Watchers is trading at nineteen dollars and four cents. So the number ten at uh, well the number ten at McDonald's is like ten dollars. They charge well, <laughs> well, you know, just if you it's it's like eight or nine dollars, but. It won't stop just there. Think about the big picture in the full Uh of that morning. Mm -hmm. You might have got the seven here and then went over to QT or something, whatever you, and picked up a couple of items. Okay, so you're spending $10, right, and throughout the day. So let's say you do that for two days. Um, And we can go back to what Eric was just speaking on. You could own a share of Weight Watchers with some change. With, with With a number five, a Red Bull, a OJ. And, and, a, and, and some and Starbucks, yo. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. I, you didn't get that. And it, it ain't even oh, 3 right, o'clock right. yet. And I like what you said. Long-term and short-term investment. So when I'm putting the money into the movies, mm-hmm. that's long-term. Mm-hmm. And so when I put the money into videos or get paid, that's short-term. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. it all goes into the long-term effect of what I'm trying to do with my life. So that's why I wanted to, you know, you had just made me think to mm-hmm. diversify to take some of that, what I'm doing, and then invest it. So it'll be working while I'm working. And with wow. the, and that's, see, that's see, great. that's great. That's that you great. Said, that's working great while right you're there. working because with that, with that, also with the long term investment, you have to think like, okay, this might not gain as much as I want. Because one, one, you know, a stigma that a lot of people see, they see these music artists and they want that quick money, that fast money. You know, almost to say that dope money, so to yeah, speak. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's like, I want it right now. Well, when you think about these long-term investments where you feel like I'm not getting a big return. Well, of course, over the course of a year, you might get a decent return, but in the short term, it's not. Well, a lot of times these long-term investments have dividends. Now, these dividends is basically a portion of a company's earnings that they're giving back to their shareholders, in essence, to keep them happy because the stock doesn't fluctuate as much. So if you look at a company that's a technology company, they tend to fluctuate a lot in their stock price. I mean, if you look at Facebook and Twitter, their stock can go up and down at the drop of a dime. But something like a Bank of America ain't really changing that much. Yeah, or J.P. Morgan Chase. Um, it's it's not gonna really change that yeah. much. And you'll what what you'll start to receive are dividends checks. And if you look at Facebook, Facebook doesn't have a dividend, but Bank of America does. Uh-huh. Now, if you look at this dividend, let's say they got a dividend, they're paying out, um, they're paying out, you know, two dollars per share in a dividend annually. 
Well, if you got 100 shares in the stock, you're getting $200 of free money. Right, right. How much is a pair of Jordans nowadays? It's, a, it's you know, it might be about 200 bucks. So when them Christmas patent leathers come out, them 11s, yeah, them 11s, them 11s. You know, all of a sudden you got the money from the dividends to get 73 the days, tens this all year. All from yeah. investing and your investments to make money on it. So, right, right, right. Yeah. Right. So, That's why it didn't look like it. Was. Oh, okay. We still going. We still going. We had a little technical difficulty. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll edit that out. We'll edit yeah, that yeah, out. Yeah. But you look at the uh, Jordan 11s, right? So the Jordan 11s. They come out, they're like two hundred dollars, and people go crazy over those. They go cray cray over these over these shoes, right? Me and um, me and you, Eric, were talking last night about like Dr. Dre, and we were talking about Beast by Dre headphones, mm -hmm. right? And I came up with the synopsis, and I was saying, I wonder why Dr. Dre didn't go public, why he didn't say, you know what? You mean an IPO? Have an IPO, yeah. yeah Why yeah. didn't he have an IPO? For all y'all watching Empire, you probably know what an IPO, IPO is, is by now. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or you can check out our video on our website to check the video on IPOs. Yeah, he had to get and that we actually in. compare IPOs to a, a hip hop artist dropping an album or a mixtape. So check that yeah. out. It's, it's pretty cool. So I was wondering. So as we were talking, I was wondering. Well, I was I was like, he had enough momentum, i.e., Dr. Dre, to have an IPO mm -hmm. because. Beast by Dre were, they were set and on their way to becoming the next thing in home entertainment. The reason why Apple saw fit to invest in Beast by Dre is because when you look at it, if you have an iPhone, what are you listening to the music out of? You, li you listen yeah. to Beast, Beast by Dre headphones. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you got an HP computer... It already comes equipped with Beast by Dre headphones. Mm -hmm. The next thing for Beast by Dre was to move into the realm where you have sound bars, subwoofers. You got you got all this kind of stuff. You got even TV brands and TV models that are putting now Beast by Dre into their TVs that come in mm -hmm. equipped. Integrating. Those integrating. Those. They're integrating that. Even yeah. in cars. I think I think it was Chrysler who started to put the Beast by Dre speakers in their cars. Mm -hmm. So Apple, so their market cap, Apple's market cap is like $750 billion right now, right? It's a lot so, of Benjamin. <laughs> that's a lot of bread right there. So yeah. Apple is forward thinking. They're thinking a long, they're thinking in terms of a long-term investment instead of a short-term investment. Mm -hmm. So, like the like you were saying, Broderick, you have you do music videos that may be a short-term investment mm -hmm. to fund right. your long-term investment which is make creating films. So, with the Beast by Dre thing, I wanted to get you guys opinion on do you think that they should have had an IPO or do you think that the the mode of thinking was for Dre to just pull the 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 three hundred billion out and say I'm done with it. But uh, my thing to that, I like Dr. Dre, uh, their concept, and we had we kind of touched on it earlier. Bose versus uh, Beast oh Dre. Bose, okay, yeah, those two companies where Dr. Dre was just able to reach a different demographics by just being diverse and Bo's company was just their boardroom wasn't diverse they couldn't ride the wave okay. so as y'all was talking about the IPO when I if I can come in and invest in a company and blow it up and get 350 million dollars mm -hmm. I do that in a heartbeat okay. and let Apple deal with getting that and building the company. Oh, okay. That's to me to invest in something and to get it out that much is a great investment before well, it starts to fall so, out. So I think Beast by Dre peaked at the time of them selling. Great, great time. And that's that's just like with movies and investments, the peaking at the time to sell or stay. I think that when you when you mention about selling the peak, it's kind of one of those like, you know, get out while they're getting good kind of kind of scenario, right. almost. Um, the I think the beautiful part of with an IPO is that it can take that valuation to even more. So mm -hmm. to kind of flip it, there was recently a IPO for Shake Shack, the burger and fries place right. based out of New York. Mm -hmm. Well, they had an initial IPO stock price 
Um, it was supposed to be like fourteen, fifteen dollars. It ended up being like twenty bucks. The stock actually shot up to as high as like fifty-five dollars on day one. Now it's come down to like under forty, and now it's back at about forty-five. But you got to think in a week, two weeks time span, the stock is valued, or their you know their market cap is twice of what it was initially supposed to be. Mm-hmm. So if if Beats was sold to Apple, you know. Why couldn't an IPO have been done in double that money? And a lot of times, it's a lot of mergers and acquisitions going on. Right. A lot of times in, in the stock market, you'll hear this term M&A, M&A. All it means is merger and acquisitions. Companies are coming together or one is buying another yeah. out. So instead of selling to Apple right away, which I'm not saying it's a bad move. I'm just trying to think outside the box. Instead of selling to Apple right away, why not have an IPO and sell it for even more? Yeah, and I, now you have a bigger a bigger valuation on the company right. as opposed to what it was before, and it's a bigger payday. So I was thinking probably he had maybe three or four investors making a decision with him. So mm-hmm. Dr. Dre owned a third, and somebody else okay. owned a third, and somebody else owned a third. So they said, okay, we got this big lump sum of money now. We before we sell, we have another vehicle ready to go. Oh, okay. okay. Another investment vehicle. So, okay. So, right. So, so, that's how you have to kind of do the movie thing. So, when one movie is going down, you already have to have your investment ready for because the wave is so important and the capital. Your mm-hmm. money is important in this time to be diverse again because mm-hmm. you can't be diverse if your assets is all tied up in this this one mm-hmm. project. Yeah. So it's a case if I had all my money tied up in watercolors and I'm mm-hmm. trying to got the chance to capitalize on the next script, I gotta be a little diversified. So with the situation with them, they got somebody on the third, maybe. Mm-hmm. Jimmy Iveen on the third and another private investor out of our limb. Okay. And they say, okay, we got another vehicle that we finna go to. So, another, so we need the capital. Another investment vehicle, um, so, because I was looking at it from the standpoint that I didn't even put those pieces of the puzzle together like that. Because mm-hmm. I was looking at it from the standpoint of Dr. Dre's limited investment knowledge. Mm-hmm. Would say, okay, let's get the, the $300 million, Let's go get that and not think of the long-term investment. Because like Eric was saying, he was saying that, you know, have the IPO, then the company is worth even more as you grow the company. But you, Broderick, made a good point when you said there were multiple investors involved and they had they probably had another investment vehicle ready to go. Ready to go. Mm-hmm. And see, and that's why you were telling me the you know the black market exchange is telling me to be diversified mm-hmm. in the portfolio to have vehicles ready. So like when I said this beat by Dre thing, you had probably everybody had a third, then they got another vehicle getting ready to go. But then they're thinking on the initial investment. Okay. Mm-hmm. We put this amount of money into it. We then mm-hmm. tripled or uh, four times over got our money out yeah. of it. And we peak it. You know, we peak it and so with all those thir- third third thirds, because uh-huh. I like my company's own uh half by Roy Richardson, the director with me. Okay. So we fifty fifty. Yeah. So if we wanted to sell a company, I'd have to make a decision based on my partner. I couldn't mm-hmm. make a clear cut one. So what I'm thinking is Dr. Dre had the thirds in there. So they okay. had to say, Okay, instead of having an IPO which we probably can monetize on that and mm-hmm. capitalize on that. Well, our initial investment is here. We need this capital so we can invest some of this. And probably and, got much shares and, from and they, and, Apple and, as and, well. And I was so bring, they're making money to be directors. I was going to bring that point out that they actually, of course, they did get shares from Apple. <laughs> yeah, you know, there, they, they, go. there you go. They're not losing. Yeah, so they back in like, money has already really been taken care of because... They still got some shares mm-hmm. and over creative direction of the company. Cause it'd be crazy for me to start saying, telling Dr. Dre been so successful at marketing. And at this point, we need you still creative over direction yeah. where it needs to go so that's, the company can thrive. That's kind of like with a lot of people are saying how Instagram is worth so much money now. Right. And they're like, why they, they shouldn't have sold to Facebook. They shouldn't have sold. Well, to your point now, 
Instagram has shares in Facebook. People right. don't understand exactly. that, they, that they still own a piece of piece Facebook. Of so them people that own Instagram ain't losing at all. So, yeah. so yeah. Dre's not losing. He got a piece the, of Apple. And he might actually be looking at the bigger picture because just as we mentioned about with Bose, Apple could be looking to get into Bose market share. So yeah. now as Apple's trying to build their ecosystem, because if you got an iPhone, you probably got an iPad, you probably got a Mac, you may even have an Apple TV. Now they might be looking into getting sound bars and sound systems that's all Apple. That's so right. your whole living is about to be Apple. You and, made a, and Dre, and Dre that, is looking at that as right. opposed to the iPhone. You made a great point, but so they dealing with billions versus the ten dollars. Yeah. They the same, they're just on different just scales. On different, just, and, that's, just, and that's what Black Market Exchange is here to do. We want to take a billionaire mindset, but attach it to a McDonald's. Damn, oh, that's, that's good. That's, 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 that's exactly, that's, 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 that's good stuff right there. That's like good that. stuff right there. That's exactly what we want to do. You don't have to be Dr. Dre. You don't have to be a CEO of a Fortune 500 company to have that mindset. Mm -hmm. Because that mindset, mindset, it's a money <laughs> mindset, and it's a forward-thinking mindset. So if you think about it, Look at who Bose targets. They target one particular people. Beats by Dre, they target everybody, the whole world. If you got some Bose headphones on, man, you're not cool. You're a 50 year old white guy. You're walking mm -hmm. around in some New Balance. That's yeah, but what I you think are. I think that I think their their thinking was not just a certain demographic, but a high end. Now we're coming into haves and have nots. So the haves don't really have a color. The nots, then you separate it into color. Yeah. Well, Bose was just uh, the Jordan of sound. Mm -hmm. You know, they now, were but no one thought somebody can come in and sell headphones at 300 a pop. And, and make it, it cool. And you know, that that's actually, I don't want to cut this short, but that's a great segue into these Yeezys that's coming oh, out. Oh, yeah. Because, <laughs> because <laughs> everybody's like, he's leaving Nike. He's leaving Nike. Kanye West actually had an interview with The Breakfast Club. The other yeah, day. I seen that. It was and a great it was, interview. It was a great interview, and he always mentions about class, but what he mentioned was that um, Nike's trying to, trying to put him in a box. But the reason they're trying to put him in a box is He's actually challenging the Jordan brand. He's saying, I'm the hottest sneaker out here. Yeah. I know you got Jordan, you're selling them like hotcakes out here, doing the retro. But when these Yeezys drop, like people go nuts. I mean, they go nuts. And so, they, and so now so, it's like he's taking that over to Adidas. So it's like that's about to challenge and hit Nike's market share just like Apple. Okay, is doing so now that we're talking about market shares, I sit here in my Air Jordan 10s, royal blue. Mm -hmm. I gotta say that I think what uh, Kanye is doing is very innovative. I didn't like the the Yeezy Boost at first, but my brother was talking to me. He's like, "Yo, those Yeezys, man, they off the chain." So I kind of looked at them. I was like, "Yo, man, I might have to get on that wave." They in the technology okay. that's, that's in that's in the the, the is, Yeezy boost. This is great. This is great dialogue because in the same thing in every realm, you have to challenge. But I don't think that I don't think he's that, not he's not challenging. But he's it's just like what we the best. I don't think he'll ever get to where Nike is because Nike that name brand is so embedded into the. Americana. Yeah, we talked it's about like this. We're about but, but I think I think he is trying to challenge, and I say that going back to his interview. Right. He mentioned how he's always tried to get into fashion, right. and you know he you know he used his example about being in the airport. You see people with their Hermes belts and you know Burberry shirts, whatever it is. But he said, you know, I got people on my team now that were working at Margiela. I got people on my team that were working at Gucci. I'm trying to take that aspect but bring it down to the common consumer level to, to deliver a quality product. Right. So that's why I feel, because if you think about it, even though Nike's churning out, people are buying to the brand, but these sneakers ain't holding up like they used to. You well, know, you used to get a well, well, that's because Jordan, retro Jordans are not made to, to for you to go out on the court and demolish them in outside court, indoor court, like they were made back in the day. So does Nike not care about the consumer? Well, anymore? the consumer is not trying to wear an Air Jordan retro, hence the word retro. They're not trying to wear an Air Jordan retro to actually go 
hoop in. What they're trying to wear Air Jordan Retro to do is to look good. I want to post these on IG. I want people to see me have these. Mm -hmm. Now, you move into the Jordan 28s and the 29s that are actually performance shoes, then people are like, okay, why is that costing $200? Because it's a performance shoe. They're still mm -hmm. making the performance shoes, but they have to cater to their market, their demographic. They have to still make these retros because there are kids out there who say, yo, these retros look good. And people like us that don't want to give it up. <laughs> I, 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 myself, I can't yeah. afford them. It's well, just well, not see, in my budget. And, and see, that's you know, a good way to flip uh, it, though. I can't people. afford them, but I do like, I like the Yeezys because they're innovative. And then you got to look at everything you can't be a follower. You got to be a leader. Sometimes you got to step out there and just step out on faith and say, mm -hmm. "Hey, this is what I believe in my product, and I and I want to put them out." But not only are they they really really cool, they stylish. Yeah, I know that. Especially cool. the red ones. He said you can go to the gym with them though. He yeah, said because they have they them. have Boost technology. Adidas is using this Boost technology, which I believe are found in the D Rose Five and into um what's his name Lillard. Lillard, uh, Damian Lillard. Damian yeah. Lillard, I think, is with Adidas. Now, y'all don't kill me in the comments if I'm wrong, but I think he's with Adidas, right? And they're using this boost technology. But when you look at it, right, we are still using technology. Now, I'm saying this because I just don't believe that Adidas has enough strength to even make a dent in Nike's market share. I do. I really... I, the I, reason I why think, I'm thinking that is because uh, our generation is a very our kids are very diverse the, it ain't no telling what kind of style and trend now a lot of people only reason nike is really just surviving is off the jays after that you really ain't nobody really rocking them air max 95s like that not like they well, are Jordan well, and the forces the last shoe that came out by nike ain't really we ain't felt that. Well, they still, still rocking. They got Hirachis dropping. They got that's an old shoe. Okay, they got they got phone posits dropping. That's an old. Okay, well you <laughs> they got Jordans dropping. That's an old shoe, but I, they got new Jordans dropping. I, I think that to new Jordans sell out in too, terms of in know. terms of challenge of Nike. I know um, we're talking about how can Adidas challenge it. I think you need to think, and this is going back to an investor mindset, like. Nike might have a majority, but they ain't got all of it. You got to factor in a company like Under Armour now. A lot of people might kind of yeah. shove Under, Under Armour Armour's under great. the rug, but like it's they just time Muhammad Ali to come on as like a sponsor. You know, they're trying to get another area. They almost signed Kevin Durant. They almost took him away from Nike. Nike yeah. So now Adidas really is like, they need to just think about the market as a whole. Of course, you need to focus on who's in number one, which is Nike right now, but you can't lose sight of also who's in your rearview mirror either. Yeah. And I but, think that Nike... Adidas is trying to reach that demographic like Beats was doing right. where they can get that consumer and uh, just kind of try to take the whole thing over. Could I say something here? Could, yeah. uh, this is a, I didn't mean to cut you off, mm. but this is a great point. Beats by Dre is just like Kanye West going to Adidas. It really doesn't have it. It really, the company is the one that's saying, I'm embracing the new. And Nike for so long it's been like Bose was in the box. You have this guy that can create shoes and sell them for $500. You got to go with that. So, That's a great so investment. how much are Yeezys retail? Let's look at them. They're, they're, they're saying it's supposed to be like $250, 250 I think. 250 retail. I, think I don't have... I don't think and he actually said in his interview, he doesn't want them to be... Because they're exclusive. He said, he said he doesn't even like this whole hype beast trend where people are flipping the shoes for a thousand. He wants to make them affordable. And he said that's another point with his with Adidas. Nike always has a limited release. Every yeah. time Jordans come out, we got five of this size. We got yeah. four of this size. He says with Adidas, I'm not trying to limit something. Now, I don't know if that's going to hold true or not. Right. Because usually it's one of those... People buy into something because they can't have it. It's so selective. So but he is saying that he doesn't want to limit it. He right. wants everyone to have it. He wants it to be, you know, he probably I wouldn't be surprised if he wants it to be a shoe of a sports organization or a, a sports league. You never know. MSRP you know? on the Adidas Yeezy 750 Boost, 350 bucks. 
That's a hundred dollars over the you, best Air Jordan you can now buy. That's about how much you would spend in a month on McDonald's. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's the same that's price a, of one, a, one purchase. Yeah, yeah, no, no. And, and then to me, I just can't afford. So imagine, like imagine that. doing all that plus getting a pair of the Yeezys. Yeah, so I now ain't ready you just spent seven hundred, and you we over here arguing about stocks being twenty dollars. Yeah, right, you, can buy, right. you can buy you some of that Chipotle stock with that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, see, and that's a great point. You guys, uh, this is a great show because we we buy the things that aren't putting back into us mm -hmm. and not investing. We buy Jordans, we buy Louis, we buy Gucci. But at the same time, one of those purchases can have you, uh, Weight Watchers was, how 19, much was, 19. was 1904. So now... You got 10 shares that's working for you mm -hmm. uh, somewhere else while you're going to your job. Yeah. And so that's the that was the key thing about the show that I love because um, pouring back into yourself and investing is not really that expensive. When we mm -hmm. got sneakers, $350. And see, that's why we named the show Brent Money in Life. Now, Brent is actually a type of oil. So, of course, it's another name for saying oil money. That's automatically associated with wealth. We want people to associate the black market exchange brand with wealth, and they're also investing in themselves. But also, Brent is a, is a benchmark indicator for oil prices in the stock market. So we're talking about investing. We're talking about stocks. Yeah. The money aspect is going to be your finance. How is a Dr. Dre or a Tim Cook from Apple viewing viewing the market and thinking as a business executive like we want to take that business executive standpoint like how you mentioned Bose isn't as diversified how can we how can we um put it into the listeners hands and have them be diversified and have that mind state of i can run my own corporation mm -hmm. i can make you know eric patrick hip-hop stock llc holding company and own all these different stocks right. and then we take the lifestyle we incorporate investing our finances and see how that affects our everyday life. How does the Yeezy Boost affect our everyday life? And this is how the Yeezy Boost affects your everyday life, right? So the Yeezy Boost is retailing for three fifty. Adidas AG, the stock price is sixty-eight dollars and eighty-two cents. You could own four shares of Adidas for the price of the Yeezy Boost. Nike is I think Nike might be around a hundred Under Armour. Like, like you own all of these companies. If you want to diversify, you can but own a little bit of Under Armour. Uh, you want you know you can get a share of Nike, a share of Adidas, and a share of Under Armour for the same price. You can go get the Yeezy Boost. But that's you, oh, I'm sorry to cut you off. That's the thing. But I, I need to interject this right here. That's the thing. We want you to to think outside of that box. We want you to realize that you can go out and buy some Yeezy Boost. That's fine. But also. With that same money, you could have bought and had ownership in Adidas mm -hmm. and Nike and on the armor. You could have diversified and, your portfolio right with, there. With this ownership, of course, we mentioned about the rate of return. We want to have we want you to have a better rate of return. That way some of that money you give back, if you want to go out and get something nice like a Yeezy Boost, you can. Mm -hmm. But you got that money and it's from not another even, source. It's not you even your use it. Yeah, you, it's, it's just extra money that you got, such as a dividend. It's just free money coming in from the company doing well from you actually investing in it. So it all comes back to investing in yourself. You can't view it as, oh, I'm, I'm buying Adidas, so Adidas is capitalizing on me. I'm capitalizing on myself by investing in them because I wear Adidas. You know, I get their apparel. So why not buy some of their stock? Because I'm already investing in the company by purchasing their apparel, their yeah. items. Yeah. You know, same thing with McDonald's. You know, if I'm shopping there, why don't I just invest in them and have the same thing? Sure. Maybe get a dividend from them and that'll cover for that that um, egg McMuffin every week. Like, yeah. it's going to cover for that. And you yeah. don't have to be a millionaire to have that mind mm -hmm. that mindset. That's what we're trying to uh, convey here. You don't have to... Because Nike is... Trading at $94.93. cents. $94 the the one year it's been trending up. So since March 2014, it's steadily been trending up. So that means if you invested a year ago, you would have made money. Yeah. You would have made money right there. So we're not we're not what what we're doing here is not trying to say, hey, 
Don't go buy Yeezy boots. Don't go buy new Jordans. But we're trying to say, okay, that money that you bought those new Jordans with, right? Save that one time. Get you two shares of Nike, right? And see how that grows over the short term and over the long term, right? And, and sorry to cut you off. In that, in this forward thinking, doing the cutoffs here, right? <laughs> in this forward, because I don't want to lose it. I don't want to lose it. Yeah, you can't lose in, it. Man. In this forward thinking with the long term investment, you have to factor. If we look at McDonald's right now, okay, mm-hmm. McDonald's, their CEO just resigned. You know, they let the brother go. Mm-hmm. They let well, the brother go. That's, that's always happened to the brother. All of a sudden, McDonald's stock seems to be hitting the plateau. They can't seem to break a barrier. The stock is at about ninety some dollars a share. It, they can't break it. Why can't they break it? Well, you get fast casual restaurants like a Zoe's Kitchen, um, you Chipotle, know, pop, you know, Pop Bellies, Chipotle, uh, Shake Shack that just came out. Mm-hmm. Like you get these companies that are having these IPOs that are coming on the stock market. Everyone's shopping there, one, because they're buzzing, two, because they're healthy. McDonald's, the perception is McDonald's forgot about our health. Yeah. Before everyone, that's why you have Whole Foods, you know, because they felt like all these other grocery stores weren't tending to that. But now they're trying to get in that game. And at this point, McDonald's is running ads just to say that we love you, that we they, care about because you. Because we feel like because, they love us. Because, because they are losing. Should have never loved us. <laughs> yeah, you know? yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they ain't never loved us. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yo, they are losing their market share because people, th- we're at a, a crossroad, right? There are going to be more people going to the left than they are to the right. And when I, what I mean by that is more people are going to the left that say, hey, I care about what I put in my body. I care about what I eat. Mm-hmm. With all the negative pub that um, McDonald's has got, you go on YouTube, you look at that pink slime, you look at what chicken nuggets are made of. I saw a KFC ad, Yum Brands, who are trying to infringe on their market share as well. The kid says, what have you been feeding me all this time? He yeah. looks at a real KFC nugget. And he's like, what have you been feeding me all this time? And that's killing their market share because McDonald's forgot about the consumer. They were forward thinking and, okay, we need more menu items. But they forgot about the consumer and didn't pay enough attention to their demographics. They were still, they their demo was still somebody out of like, the early 90s of the 80s. Mm-hmm. But you know? the, you, you're saying a great point now. See, what McDonald's did was just forgot the basic principles of investing. You got to invest in yourself, investing okay. in the company to be better. So, what that's do you mean putting money back in? What do you mean by that? What do you mean by that? Because I see them with the, the restaurants look nice. Yeah. yeah. And that's but that ain't change. invest. That's yeah. not investing. You in fixing the outside, but you can do it on the inside. The inside. So with anything, it always go back to being diverse, being uh, investing in yourself. So McDonald's should have just took the money that they were making, $96, and invested that in a new menu change, having healthy items instead of, you know, like that boardroom, what are we sitting around? What do we want to do? <laughs> $96 to ch- is an inside thing. Keep yeah. going. <laughs> <laughs> so what do we want to do to our consumers to get them in here? We don't... We, our market cap is okay. They'll buy it. But how do we be diverse and get new customers because, in? Because By it, taking... What it went wrong was putting the calories over and giving you an alternative. You don't do that. Well, you, they I, didn't they have to do that? Didn't they have to start putting the calories in? Wasn't that NBA mm, regulated? Yeah. I, I, well, what I'm saying is what... Their marketing, marketing is so key. To well, they edit. thought they had a monopoly on fast food. That's what. That's where they went wrong. Yeah. They thought they had McDonald's. We're gonna be here forever. Everybody loves us. The golden arch. That, I mean, if you think about their oh, on all their marquees, it always said over a billion served. Like that was everywhere on McDonald's. They didn't but have that, nothing but else. But McDonald's on there. carries weight. Wait, it's a great company. Mm-hmm. It's built on great principles. But like you say. Back to the bowls and stuff. You having a same company staying with the same genre and things get old. Never. And by, it goes back to the Yeezy boots. It's just like a new model of a Porsche. There are so many models out there, but you come in with this red color, this new one, these seats, and they do everything. It's got a panoramic hood. And people right now are saying, I want to change because everybody got them everybody rocking them but everybody is not 
I said they kind of fresh though. <laughs> they they fresh, but everybody has it. So now I want to do some. I want to shoe that nobody has. That's why all the new companies are springing up. You know, like you said, Chipotle, Pot Bellies, and all these people, these companies are springing up. It's just saying I got a new something that's mm-hmm. already been there. So you got okay. I'm I'm gonna say this, and I'll let you guys what you think about this. My favorite marketing company is Taco Bell. Why is that? Now, Taco, Taco Bell's owned by Yum's brand. Yum's owns brand. Pizza Hut and KFC. Yeah, because I, you know, work for that company, they have Frito Lay. But um, uh, their marketing is innovative because they take the regular taco and they put. A soft taco. Around. Well, that's well. What? And then they take that regular taco off and then make it a Dorito, Dorito. taco. <laughs> that, and then what I, they do? No, I is, never got the buzz with the Dorito <laughs> taco, okay. but it was a win. It's now, a, win it a win because <laughs> it's the same products. With four with three, and they just took the waffle and made it a waffle taco for breakfast. Yeah, yeah. see, but it's just we don't stay the same. We give you fresh new ideas. It's money in new ideas. Well, yeah. let me let me let me let me talk about this, and uh, I have Eric expound upon it. Like you said, right? So they put the Doritos taco in mm-hmm. there, but Frito Lay is behind that. What they're doing is they're cross marketing. They're saying, okay, this is this is our stuff. So now we give you a Dorito taco that you eat at Taco Bell that you that you can go out and you say, like, now I want some Dorito. But, but the, the big company is Pepsi. Pepsi owns Frito Lay. Yeah. Pepsi owns KFC. And they are diverse. Taco Bell. They have diversified. And they diversified. That's instead right. of, it's, it's, when I was working at this one company, to just make an analogy, they would process and ship at this department under one roof. Mm-hmm. They would make the product over here and ship it over here. Different tax brackets, different everything. You could charge it back and forth. Being diverse is what we what you telling me that being diverse in my portfolio is really, really great for somebody trying to invest. Mm-hmm. So like I saying, them being diverse, we got the local taco. Then we got sour cream. Then we got, <laughs> not, got the cream. Then now we added a dollar menu. What? Okay. We can't be out there. And all the money is being spent so cleverly in I, the advertising. And, and, and the, to your point also, this is the scope that we really want these listeners to get. Investments are in everything we see. Yeah. Everything. That's right. I mean, when you go to the grocery store, you get Tyson's chicken. You go to Taco Bell, you get a Dorito. T- you investing in three companies in one taco. Right. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like yeah. it's like yeah. you don't even, you don't even think that way, but you are. Oh, it's yeah. in everything that we see. I was at um at a like a local gym, um, and my wife and I we were getting like some measurements, you know, BMI and all that stuff. Well, they pulled out this little scale, and the scale said Vita Goods on there. Now I'm always in like looking at the market, seeing what's happening. So the average, you know, consumer, they might not realize what that even means. You're just going to get your measurements. But I'm like, oh, Kroger bought them last year. Kroger's diversifying their portfolio. You know, like they're buying another entity. What does a weight scale have to do with Kroger? Well, everybody's trying to get healthy. Kroger's a grocery store. So if you can have an entity where you're trying to promote your health, now Kroger is trying to challenge Whole Foods and offer organic foods, you can get all this stuff in the same holding company as an investor. You're winning because it's got so many entities. Because then you're going to have companies like an Herbal Life that is on the stock market uses these Vita Good scales that's owned by Kroger. Like, it's all intertwined into right, each that's other. that's good stuff. That's good stuff. I, it, this is the stuff that we just see every day, but we overlook it. We it overlook gets lost it. Because we, we're not exposed to it. And Black Market Exchange is here to bring it all to light here. Like, we are definitely <laughs> here to bring it to the light. Because when you go into Kroger, right, right, you see that Kroger has really harped on organics. Simply truth. Right? You go into Kroger, right? They're challenging all the organic brands that they indeed sell in their store but we're saying hey you can get it at a cheaper price and you can buy our brand so when they invest in things like scales and stuff to tell you about your bmi it's not a coincidence that when you go to sit down and take your blood pressure now the thing the the machine that you sit on not only takes your blood pressure but it says let me give you a vision test let me weigh you let me give you uh let me tell you your bmi let me tell you where you're at healthy right 
health wise are you healthy are you not healthy and then it also says our store has things if you're not healthy to to start your way you know if these grocery stores i'm just thinking this right now if these grocery stores invested in i don't know what it would cost them but to have some kind of financial or not financial um nutrition consultant like a lot of times you can go to Best Buy, they have an Apple representative there for their products. They don't have someone at Best Buy talking about it. They got someone from Apple. They're contracted out. Can a company like a Kroger contract someone from, um, you know, uh, maybe a O8 uh, Watchers? A health. Where they can, or any health. Yeah, it could be anything. And like they, a nutritionist or something. Yeah, and basically pe- customers can come in. Just like if you go to a pharmacy, you can kind of get a rundown of all your meds. <laughs> I think you're like giving something away. If you, <laughs> yo, <laughs> if next you, time we go to Kroger, they got to have a nutritionist in there. Because <laughs> if, if, I'm just saying. Yeah, if we, they, need, we need to get some of that <laughs> monetary money for that get, idea. Yeah. Got, I'm just saying. If they got like a blood pressure cuff, people get all this data. They take the nutritionist. Okay, this is what your labs are. Let's go down the aisle and show you what you need to be eating to help bring this particular aspect Issue. down. Yeah. If it's blood pressure, these particular items can help with your blood pressure. If it's cholesterol, these particular items, instead of you going into Walgreens, you check the blood pressure, oh, it's high, what do I do now? Like, I don't know. Well, see, or well, this is what it is. I mean, what's a different sector, yeah. but it's just the point, someone is there to help you in order to, let me, let me get you. someone is there to help you in order to get it, you know, take you, take you to the next level. Now the grocery store is investing in your health. Right, right. You're more likely to shop at Kroger. That's going to increase their margins and their bottom line. That's going to increase their stock price. Right, right. It is. It is. And, and with that, this is going to conclude our first episode of man, Rent so Money. Much to talk about. It's so, it's man, so, I, I, yeah. so <laughs> much, man. We, you know what? You know what? We're going to leave it at that because it's so much. So tune in next week. We'll have fresh new topics that deal with our everyday lives, how we how we can invest in ourselves, how can we invest in companies that we use every day, man. I am at Carter Park. This is Eric Patrick, the Hip Hop Stock Doc. Make sure you check us out on Instagram, um, black underscore market underscore exchange, and Twitter um, at BMEX underscore. Our website is www.thebmex, that's B-M-E-X dot com. Make sure you check out our Market Mondays, Teaching Thursday videos. We also um, have a verse of the week where we take hip hop lyrics and explain investment terms and concepts through that to make sure that we can reach the people. And we want to thank our guests for sitting yeah, in with up? us, man. And thank you, uh, thank you for having plug me. your movies, plug your your, your hey. social media. Okay, uh, go to luxfilmworks.com and check out our full length film, Watercolors. Uh, be on the lookout, and you can see everything there too. We got a new film called Waves. Uh, I am Broderick C on Twitter. I am Broderick C on Instagram. Follow me, Arthur Broderick Carter, on Facebook. Like our Facebook page. Just Lux Film Works. Stay down with the independent movement. And guys, thank y'all for having me. Love God, live life. We out.